And thank you for staying with us. Children's Code provides a multidisciplinary response to child victims of sexual abuse, severe physical abuse, witnesses to domestic violence, and then also commercial sexual exploitation. They provide compassionate, efficient, and child-friendly facility for child abuse intervention, as well as reducing the chances that children are re-traumatized and preserves the best evidence for investigators. Advocates offer victims emotional support, as well as information and a way to find help and resources. Joining us now to tell us a little bit more and provide further insight is the Family Advocate for Children's Cove and the Cape and Islands Child Advocacy Center, Melanie Sachs. And Melanie, good to have you with us. Hey, great to, ha great to be here. I'm really excited for our conversation today. Great, and thank you for sharing with us. And we really want to have this conversation because it's important. You do great work in terms of working with victims and navigating them through this very sensitive process. So tell us a little bit about the work that you do. Um, yeah, so my role as a family advocate here um, and advocates across the country are doing a similar thing. Um, so really our role is to walk families through every process that they have to go through. We're right by their side through our process at the Child Advocacy Center, which is uh, where I work at Children's Cove, um, and through the court system if needed, and getting families what they need in each and every moment of their journey. And give us a little bit more about Children's Cove, because a lot of people may not be familiar. You do some great work. Give us a little bit about Children's Cove and the work that you do. We're one of 12 child advocacy centers in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but we're one of over 850 across the country. Um, so many counties, most counties do have one at this, at this point, doing a, a similar thing with a similar model um, to maximize information for investigations and to minimize trauma for child victims and their families. And you're working right now in the Northeast Corridor, but child abuse is prevalent all across the United States, more particularly in New York City. Can you give us an idea of what you're actually seeing with boots on the ground? Yeah, so I'm actually, I'm in Massachusetts, so um, our numbers probably are a little bit different, and we're kind of a different community as well, um, but I think I think the number of cases that we're seeing, it's not that they've gone up necessarily, but more people are being comfortable talking about it, because um, there's a lot more awareness out there, there's a lot more support for survivors out there, and we're just one of those supports in every community. Well, Melanie, when it comes to victims, I know one of the greatest things that happens is there's a lack of trust. They've already been violated. They've already gone through sometimes a horrific experience, life-altering experience. But there's a need to walk victims through uh, the experience to help them to move them forward. And so how do you go about developing that trust and at the same time navig them, navigating them forward uh, to move past what they've experienced? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's a foundation of trust. It's a foundation of rapport building with the child and the family. So when the family comes to visit us here at Children's Cove, um, I'm the, really the first person that they meet at the door. So I'm greeting the family to walk them in, get them settled, and to get them um, comfortable with the process because they're walking into the unknown and they're walking into a really difficult thing that their child is going to have to do. Um, but at the same time, we want them to feel comfortable and supported. So we actually, um, our center is like a little house. Um, so it just feels comfortable um, and a little bit off the map. So it's not a big sign at the end of the street. Um, we have a playground for kids to play in, um, just to kind of build that rapport with the family, depending on how old the child is. I'm just sitting down if it's a teenager and just introducing myself and my role and who I am, what I do and why I do it. Um, and then from there, I'll really walk the family through every step of our process. So from the moment they walk in the door to what's going to happen next, to how I can be there to support them through the process, any questions, fears, or concerns that they may have prior to the forensic interview. Um, and then beyond that, really just continuing to build that rapport, um, especially with the child, if they have any interests, kind of talking to them about those interests, um, kind of beyond what happened to them. You know, we want kids and families to move beyond what happened to them. Um, so really that kind of heal, survive, thrive model um, that we really want just families to have the healthiest outcome when they leave here. Um, and we've heard those stories over and over again. And for someone who's not familiar with the role of a victim advocate, we know that's what you do, but for somebody who doesn't know, what exactly is a victim advocate? 
um, I have my own personal experience with this. I was actually interviewed as a child at a child advocacy center about what I went through. So I kind of know firsthand from the other side what it's like to walk through the process. So I'm using that as fuel to um, walk alongside these families into kind of the unsaid, letting them know that they're not alone and that I understand and um, just empowering them to make their own empowering decisions with what's about to happen um, and getting them all the resources, just getting them wrapped up like a big hug of resources, um, just anything from, you know, assistance with back to school, restraining orders, walking them through processes like the court system, um, things that may be confusing, you know, lots of different language can be used, um, just kind of maybe even translating some of that into something that's more easy to understand. Um, walking beside them through every step of the process, not, not even just immediately, but a year or two out even, um, because we know that the courts take some time um, to get cases together and I'm walking right beside the family wherever they need me prior to that day and during the court process. Um, so really just, I'm literally wherever the family is whenever they need me. Well, it's very clear that you guys have an array of services that you actually perform. Uh, can you give our viewers an opportunity to know uh, where they can connect with you if they really want to latch on to these services or if they just simply want to make a phone call and find out some more information? Yeah, and I think an important thing about my role is to really just be compassionately listening. Um, you know, I'm not going to always be able to have the answer or fix it at all. And so just really being able to compassionately compassionately listen on the other end of the phone. And I think that's what a lot of advocates that I know strive to do is just to be someone on the other end of the phone to listen. Um, so there's some great resources for, um, depending on where you are, it's gonna be a little bit different. It might be, um, you know, a DA's office that has a child advocacy center in it, um, or a freestanding child advocacy center, which is what we are here on the Cape. Um, but you can go to uh, the National Children's Alliance website and the National Child Advocacy Center website, and both of those will have ways for you to find your local child advocacy center and numbers to call. Well, we're about to wrap up, but I do want to give you an opportunity to tell our viewers uh, something. What is it that you would want them to know, particularly when it comes to the area of abuse, as well as also advocacy? One of the biggest things that I want people to know is that survivors are more than their stories. Um, so we see the kids or teens at a really difficult time in their life. They may be really struggling with the aftermath of the abuse. Um, but, but we see those kids, you know, coming here is often their first step to healing, um, to sharing their stories in a neutral environment, being believed and supported. Um, and I, I just want people to know that survivors should be, be believed and supported no matter what. Um, and that we can walk alongside them, even in your own life, you can walk alongside survivors. You can believe them. You can support them. You can compassionately listen to them. And now that you have resources from this show, you can get them in the right direction to get some support and some healing um, from the child advocacy centers or local resources in your community. Well, Melanie Sachs, thank you so much for taking the time and being with us and sharing with us here on Open. Very vital information for a lot of people and for someone who may be watching you're just simply a phone call away. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. It's been an honor. All right, Melanie is with us. And listen, we want you to continue to stay with us. Listen, we got more open coming up. We'll be right back right after this.